Hello and welcome back to Dawn Chorus Writes, a miraculous ladybug fan fiction. This is the series a Meeting Under the Stars and we are on chapter 16. So if you haven't listened to all the other chapters, they will be listed down below. Make sure you catch up, you smash the like button, you subscribe so you don't miss out on future episodes and you comment down below of what you think is happening and what's about to happen and what's to come, okay? So, and if you don't know what to say, say Mayura. So, I hope you enjoy. Chapter 16, Marinette's POV. Marinette brushed over the details of the last few days, especially the fact that she had discovered the guy she'd been in love with for over six years also happened to be a partner Chap Noir. Ali knew Marinette was Ladybug, but telling her that Adrian was Shat was something she would need to discuss with him first. And if Ali knew, the chances were Nino would find out. Plus, the risk with two extra people knowing both Ladybug's and Chat Noir's identity would be too high with the games Hawk Moth and Phoenix Sobert were playing. No. It was better if she glossed over the situation. Now that a few days had passed, she was blending the two men into one a little bit easier. But oh, how she wished she could confess it all to a friend and gain a little outside perspective on the matter. I still can't believe it. After all this time, you and Adrian are finally together? It's been killing me not to tell you about his feelings for you but he insisted he would do it when the time was right and then Nino said I was under the bro code now that I lived with them what you knew all this time that Adrian had feelings for me and you didn't tell me I would have thought best friend code trumped bro code promised he would find the right time now and now he has and it wasn't as if it was a straight-up confession i just saw how he was going out of his way to please you and be around you and how his face would light up when he talked about you in the flat marinette felt herself blush at the idea of adrian having a crush on her and act like she had done years ago Looking back, there had been signs, but how had she not seen it earlier? Was she the blind one this time round? He's sweet, isn't he? Marinette muttered to herself. Anyway, I thought something was happening with Shat. Weren't you falling for him too? Ali appeared at her over the rim of her black glasses, causing Marinette to cough. Uh, yeah, we had a moment. Oh, this was going to be harder than she thought. Thinking back to all the conversations she had with her best friend and she tried to work out her partner. So, are you going to stop him from popping round after the battles now? As it might be a little awkward with Adrian sitting in the room. Alia smirked. I never thought my bestie would be the one choosing between Shat or Adrian. But I'm with Adrian, so the decision has been made. And I love him. I'm happy. I'm only teasing with you. I'm glad that you two have found each other. Maybe it might finally put a smile on his face. What do you mean? Marinette took the last mouthful of a hot chocolate, swirling the bottom of a mug for the bitter, rich cocoa layer. Had you not noticed how he has seemed more down than usual? Part of me thought it was him pining for you, but I think the anniversary of Natalie's death hasn't helped. I mean, if he wasn't working, then he would be either in his room studying or out training with you. Did he not say anything? Oh, how had she forgotten? She counted back the dates in her head. That had been the day Shat was distracted during the Kuma fight and she had been hurt a little. 
That was also the night he had curled up with her and cried in her arms. It all made sense now. Knowing, in fact, it was Adrian in her arms this whole time? As soon as one piece of the puzzle unlocked, the rest followed. Her mind filtered through the years, remembering back to the night after they had one of the major battles with Hogmoth and Mayora. The one battle that had exposed their team to the true reality of the fight and brought the death of Mayora. After that battle, she had vowed to herself not to use her team or friends again. It was a secret that she thought she would never tell, not even to Shet. He had been fighting Hawkmoth as she had taken on Mayura, and yet the more they had fought, the weaker her enemy became. She had begged her to stop, to give back the miraculous, and that she would help, and that she would get her help. But it had been too late. Ladybug stared at the supervillain as she transformed back into Natalie, one of the key people who had helped and cared for Adrian, who was around him all the time. Distracted in thought for a split second, Ladybug had failed to notice Natalie collapse and fall off the roof. She had even leapt after her, trying to reach out with her yo-yo as Hawkmoth dived in front, carrying Mayura away, or Natalie, as Shat had caught her before she crashed. She had been ready to tell Shat everything, but the following morning, she had discovered Natalie had died. She didn't know what to do. Had she been to blame? Did she kill Mayura? And how was she, Natalie, when Adrian had told Marinette that she was sick in her bed? None of it made sense, and even now she struggled to understand. The line from the family was that Natalie had succumbed to her illness and had sadly died. Marinette couldn't say anything, and how much proof did Ladybug have to declare a dead woman that she was one half of the most wanted couple in Paris, that the woman you knew was in fact a supervillain. How could she do that to Adrian, knowing she was no longer a threat? The night before the funeral, Shat had paid her a visit and crumpled into Marinette's arms. She hadn't known then it was because of Natalie, and at that moment, she had felt just as broken. How had she not seen all the pieces fitting together between Shat and Adrian? And to him, Natalie was still this second motherly figure he had lost and not Mayura. So how could she tell him now? Marinette! Hello? You there? Alia leaned forward, waving a hand in front of her face. What? Sorry. What did you say? Marinette gripped the side of a chair, planting her back into the present. Did you hear anything I said? No. Sorry. I'd forgotten about the date and hadn't realised what Adrian had been going through. I feel bad. Well, I was saying... Nino has texts and said he and Adrian are preparing to watch a film if we fancy picking up some snacks. How about it? Come back with me? Elia gave her a soft smile. I had told him I needed time to work on my designs this evening, but yeah, I think checking up with him is more important. I just wonder why he didn't tell me earlier. You know Adrian. You have to pry the information out of him. He's not one for making a fuss. I think he's too used to keeping his emotions bottled up with his father and hasn't broken the cycle. Well, I think that is something I will have to convince him to work on. Oh, the healing power of love. Alia wiggled her eyebrows as Marinette shook her head, trying to hold back the giggles. 
Come on then, girl. We need to get back before they pick out the takeaway. I simply don't trust Nino with that much freedom of choice. They both laughed, remembering the last time he had picked out dishes with four chilies in the labels. Marinette packed her things back into a bag with a bubbling sense of guilt. She decided tonight she would be the girlfriend Adrian deserved and needed right now. Her designs will have to wait. And so will the truth. Thank you for listening to chapter 16 of Meeting Under the Stars. Comment down below what you think of it so far and what you think is going to happen next. I'd love to hear what you all say. Make sure you smash that like button. It helps all the algorithms and it helps boost the channel and everything and supports it. And subscribe if you haven't already. What are you waiting for? You're on chapter 16, seriously. Um, and so I hope you enjoy and I will see you next week for chapter 17. You don't want to miss out. Okay, bye.